Today on the Name a Better Duo podcast, we have LaTanya Michelle. LaTanya Michelle is a best-selling author, speaker, mentor, and businesswoman. As the president of LaTanya Michelle International, she has a passion for releasing the unlimited potential that lies within each individual, company, organization, or ministry, and to impact the lives of people around the world with the love and power of God. With over 25 years of business management, corporate training, and consulting experience, LaTanya has completed, developed, and implemented personal and business development programs. Her experience as a professional speaker and wellness coach allows her to educate on employee wellness, stress triggers in the workplace, leadership development, and communication skills. LaTanya has also received awards for business and ministry, including the Lifetime Achievement Award from Crenshaw Christian Center and the Goodwill Industries Business Now Training Award. Previous clients of LaTanya Michelle International have included the City of Los Angeles, the Los Angeles County Office of Education, the Orange County Probation Department, and more. LaTanya now speaks on a variety of topics, inspiring others to live a life of passion, purpose, and prosperity. Welcome, LaTanya Michelle. Hello. Hi, hi. Happy to be here. So happy to be here with you. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, If you guys listen to my other podcast with my beautiful sis, uh, Lillian, Latanya has been a guest on there as well on the Buck Out podcast. So she's family. <laughs> Even before the podcast, she was family. But I'm so happy to have you here on this platform. I know that you have so much to offer and to deliver. So we're we're gonna hop right into this thing. So what we always okay. do, we start off with a game. And the game is called okay. The People Want to Know. Because the people, you know, they want to know you, you know, they want to know <laughs> oh, who, yikes. who is this person who's, who's, who's do giving they? us advice. They want to know. I can promise. Do they? Okay. I hope <laughs> they they're want ready. To know. And I one of my favorite ready. questions to ask people in this game, because I feel like it really helps you get to know a person is. If you could hear any song again for the first time, you know, that one song that when you first heard it, you're like, this is my jam. If you could hear any song again, what would it be? It could be okay. anything, any genre, any, any even something so we don't I'll know. tell you this, and you probably are not ready, but my jam is uh, Lose Yourself, Eminem. Yes. Eight Mile. Oh, my God. When he did that song. On eight mile, I was done. Oh, that's it. I was done. And that song right now is like one of my favorites. It is my anthem. Yeah. But when I really have to get ready to go out and do what we need to do, yeah, it is lose yourself. That's a good, like you said, never would have saw that coming. <laughs> saw that coming from my prayer warrior, but lose yourself is the jam. Like that's honestly, the jam. When he performed at the Super Bowl. Oh, I, like, I forgot how Girl. much I love this song. <laughs> you forget, you forget, yeah. but that is, that's it. And if mm-hmm. you ever need to push yourself to like, do what you need to do, if it's speaking, if it's any sports, any place where you have to pull up some confidence, that's the jam. I love that you said pull up because it starts real low and then he gets real right. excited, exactly. animated. And, and that's what you know, but he's like, you can do anything you want to do. And I'm like, yes, I can. And yeah. yeah. So that's that that's the good jam one. right there. Mm. That's a good one. I'm adding that yeah. to my list, to my playlist. Add it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll get you going. It'll, It'll get, get you going. going. Yeah. Okay. So Latanya, who or what do you go to for a pick me up when you just need to feel good? So this may sound really corny, especially since we were just talking about Eminem. I am a really big Joel Osteen fan. And if you don't know how refreshing, yeah. encouraging, and positive mm-hmm. his messages are, I would just encourage you to spend some time with his podcast or YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. I know we get a lot of spiritual teaching and we learn a lot about warfare and strategy and, and all of these things, but I found for me, when I'm really, really low, uh, his messages just refresh my soul. They plant seeds of hope in it when situations look hopeless. And it gives me another perspective of what's happening in the body of Christ and what God is saying to, to the, to the kingdom, you know? So when I'm really down, no, forgive me. It's not even when I'm really down. I listen to him regularly. 
Yeah. And I think it started when my mom passed away in 2012, there was a particular message of his that I actually put on my phone. And this is before I was in the podcast and, and probably not YouTube. I just recorded it. Mm -hmm. And I listened to this message from him every day for about six months. It allowed me to not fall into the depths of the grief that was looming at the door during that time and the change of life without her being there and the loss of a friend. Uh, like first thing in the morning, I'd have it on all night, but that particular message, it kept my soul fresh. Mm. And I talk a lot about spiritual hygiene. And one of the things that I found is that it is, it's, like we have to wash, <laughs> prayerfully you wash mm -hmm. your body every day. Mm -hmm. Washing our soul, cleansing our spirit is so important. And we can hear a lot of messages that talk about strategy and pushing forward and spiritual warfare and those things. But I found that there is a place for simply allowing the goodness of God, hearing about our our victory in Christ and how God has already set up so many blessings for us on our path. That has to be a part of my spiritual hygiene. It encourages me to forgive. It encourages me to keep my mind in the right space. It encourages me to, to continue to believe when I do not see. So our spiritual hygiene is so important. And I've found that that is the pick me up. Um, he, his podcast, his messages, his weekly messages, just refresh my soul so that I can be clean and, 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 um, renewed enough to apply all of the other principles and strategies that we get. I love that term spiritual hygiene. Like it needs to be a regular practice. And I noticed that I, I had a season as well where, every night he was the last Joel Osteen was the last yes. voice I listened to because like you said yeah. first of all what you have in your spirit before you go to bed is so crucial I feel like Ooh, that it period is. of stillness is just you want to make sure you're feeding your soul with the right thing and when it comes yes. to positivity Joel Osteen is it <laughs> he's it <laughs> he's yeah, I agree. he is definitely the one to go to I agree. I agree. um last question that the people want to know what would you say are some must reads if you want to build, say, your spiritual life or your career? What are some must reads for you? What the, uh, I have this book by Dr. Bill Winston, and it's called The Revelation of Royalty. Mm -hmm. This book is a must read for any believer that is ready to walk in not just know about, but to walk in the authority that God has given us as um, children of God and as members of the kingdom of God. It's called Revelation of Royalty, Rediscovering Your Royal Identity in Christ. And this, to me, is a, it's a must read for uh, believers that are looking to grow in God and in what he's called us to as members of the kingdom and ambassadors of Christ. That's good. That's good. I need to check that one out. I haven't read that yet. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. So I think the people got to know you, Latanya. We're going to have, bit. <laughs> they got to know you a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. Now we're going to hop into these questions and get to know you a little bit more. Okay. Um, we learned in your bio that you are a speaker and hmm. a, a ministry leader. And I want to know, when did you learn the power in your voice? God, I love that question. I love it. Uh, I would say that I learned the power of my voice when I was about seven years old. Mm -hmm. I've always been, I was that girl that loved the Christmas and the Easter speeches. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was that kid. I was like, give me that speech. I'm ready. What? What? Where are we doing this? I was chosen like at nine years old to go represent our ministry on a Nash for a um, national convention. And I'll tell you, ever since then, um, I understood how important it was to 
how important a platform was, mm. how important it was to be able to communicate your your beliefs in Christ and how that could touch and move other people. So I've I've been a passion I've been passionate about using my voice to encourage and inspire people since I was a little since I was a little girl. Uh, and then I started writing shortly after. So around 12, 13, I started writing and and um, creating poems and and writing. I'm a avid writer. So understanding that there was the spoken word and then the written word has that has been a part of how I've chosen intentionally to contribute to the lives of people around me and ultimately to the body of Christ. I love that. First of all, I never heard that childhood story. And I think that that's so important to be able to look back and notice, you know, sometimes one of the things, because we talk a lot about careers on here too. And one of the things that, you know, a lot of people struggle with is determining what they are good at or what is their thing or what is it they want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be able to mm-hmm. recognize this is something that I love at a young age is a beautiful thing. And then to be able to learn, okay, this is actually something I can monetize is a great thing as well. You know, I think that that's yeah. the goal always is to be able to find the thing that we love and then how can we monetize that? So I love that. How do words motivate and encourage the loss. I think often we use, we, we say the term motivational speaker. Um, why is that? How, how are we able to use words and, and, you know, just the spoken word to encourage other people? So I probably have a very different um, point of view when it comes to that particular question and I'll share, and I'm really open to a discussion on it. I believe that words were first used to create and then they were used to communicate. Okay. So for me at this stage in my life and at this place in my relationship with God and understanding my responsibility in the kingdom of God, I believe that the language and the words that we use should first be used to create create atmospheres, to create understanding, to create circumstances and situations. So when you ask how can words be used to encourage and to motivate the lost, I believe that that first comes prior to you even being engaged with them. Having a heart set and a mindset on a daily basis to be intentional and, and, and speak to the atmosphere that the anointing of God that is inside of me, God, will be used for your glory today. That as I go for that, before I engage people, places, and things, these are the things that I'm saying to my heart. These are the things that I'm speaking into the atmosphere in order to create opportunities, in order to create atmospheres and environments Mm -hmm. so that the lost can engage with the presence of God. Because the word of God tells us that unless the Holy Spirit opens up the revelation, they're they're still going to walk in darkness. So a person can come into contact with words. They can come into contact with people all the time. But unless the spirit of God opens their eyes up and opens their heart up to receive Christ and to have an understanding of the word, that's why Jesus spoke in parables. Some will understand and some will not. It is the spirit of God that sheds light. So in order for us to be effective in moving, engaging, and touching the lost with our words, I believe it begins with an intention to create an atmosphere that will allow for opportunities for you to be a vessel, to use the the words and and the love of God to touch, to speak forth, to engage Mm -hmm. any soul that the Lord has that will come, that will come your way. And then secondly, I believe that words are what God uses when he wants to create something in us. And in order for us to be fruitful, engaging the lost, we have to have a vocabulary, a mindset and a, um, 
what is it, a, a spoken, a consistently spoken affirmation that the words that I speak and the love that I release touches the lives of people. Father, I'm asking you to use me and my words to touch them. So I don't believe that it is a always a pre-written set of string of words that come together. I believe that is the language of love of the Holy Spirit that we engage in creating first the opportunity and then being prepared to hear from him at any given time so that we can release the proper words that will touch the individuals, the people, the places, the ministries that we have been called and assigned to. That's so good. That's so good because I think that's what separates someone who's just a good speaker who can speak well from those who are called to speak, you know, those who are intentional about the atmosphere that they are creating and the souls that they are reaching. Because, you know, it's one thing to get up there and motivate someone and make them feel good for a few minutes, but it's another thing to reach their soul and make them right. want to ignite change or make them want to be a uh. person or make them want to come out of the rut that they're in, like that is something that it takes intentionality. It takes that relationship yes. with God. It takes, you know, hearing from him to, to know yes. the right words to say and not just saying these practice words, you know, but sometimes okay. you gotta go with the the flow and shift you and know, the spirit, you know, exactly. So that that is when you're called. And I, I can tell, you know, I know firsthand that you are called. And one of the things that I know firsthand is your your gift to lead the next generation of intercessors and I want to ask you how um, and when I say how like what are the the tools or the gifts you feel like God has given you to be able to you know aid millennials in growing in their prayer life and the generations after millennials that's a really now that's a good question tools uh so I used to I used to say all the time um, that I'm a, a motivational speaker because I did a lot of work in with corporations and companies and I that was just the thing to be a motivational speaker, right? Um, along with the author, coach, all those other things. However, I, I got like sat down pushed to the side, sat down and shut up by the Holy Ghost. And he was like, you're not a motivational speaker. You are a intercessor, an ambassador. You are a world changer. You are a life changer. And until I begin to really begin, till I begin to understand that my calling, as you said, is not just to motivate others, but to truly be an agent of transformation and change, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to grab hold to my assignment of creating new, mm -hmm. empowered, not creating, but empowering the next generation of intercessors. So understanding that that, that was an assignment from God made it um, allowed for the grace of God in that role to begin to show up. I think that in dealing with um, millennials, Gen X and, and any generation uh, younger than myself, that there is a tendency for um, adults to want to give them information and to give them instruction. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I believe that God has gifted me with is the ability to see a gift and to call out a gift and to begin to prepare young people, people to walk in the gift that they've given them, not a lot, not expecting them to be a cookie cutter of myself, mm. anyone else, or to walk in this straight line. When you are when you are working with people, people have a humanity to them that has to be nurtured in our in in our attempt to coach in our attempt to teach in our attempt to lead we must nurture the humanity of the person before we can expect to teach them to intercede 
to pray, to speak, to lead. We got to, to touch the person. I have a personal mission statement that the spirit of God gave me, and it is to positively impact the lives of people around the world with the love and the power of God. And what that, that why that is so important for me as a standard is because the love touches the humanity. It touches the person. It touches the student so that the student's heart is then able not just to hear the information or receive any information or training or coaching that you're doing, but it, it, it allows them to have the strength, the courage to safely move forward in the instruction that's given, to safely move forward in the gift that is being released. So if we are talking about the tools that are needed or the tools that have been used to empower a new generation of intercessors, I would say being able to see the person and love the person beyond any Christian expectation, Mm-hmm. being able to see the gift of God that is inside of them, allowing people to be human, allowing individuals to grow, but then also nurturing the gift that God has placed and calling them forward by being an example, calling it forward by creating a safe space for them to use it, calling them forward by allowing them to see that they are needed and expected to answer a call of God that is on their lives. Mm, That's a word. (laughs) That's a whole (laughs) word because I feel like, and I'm even guilty of it now that with the generation coming after me. Right, exactly. Judgmental or like, why do you do things this way? This is a better way. And being able to look through their lens, you know, and seeing them for who, God yeah. created them to be. We have to. It's so necessary because if we just preach at them and tell them this is the way, they're not. This is the standard. This is yeah. the way. It's going to be in one ear and out the other, you know. Yeah. But for you to be able to see them, you yeah. know, and see them through God's lens, you know, yes. He created them and see them through with His love and His light, then you can actually maybe, you know, foster them in the right, you know, into who they could. Their, their full potential, right. you know, mm-hmm. I think that, man, like if you can really look beyond your own, I think one of the, the biggest things with people, and this is of all ages, is accepting people who are different from them, you know, and realize <laughs> yes. that there are gifts within that, you know, like God didn't make any two people the same. And we see so much of that on social media now with all this right. critique of how people behave because, ah! it's, because it's not what they would do, <laughs> you know? And it's like, that person you isn't you. Me. You're right. I'm not you. And you don't know me well enough to judge my actions by one incident. Exactly. Exactly. So, man, that's a word for every person listening. It's like, every look person. through God. Look at people with humanity in their humanity, humanity. through humanity. God's lens and realize yeah. he created them in their uniqueness, you know, and, and being able to take that uniqueness and be and, and nurture it rather than judge Make it. a safe space for yeah. them to grow, develop, rise and fall, make mistakes and shine. I think that's... Yeah, I think our responsibility. Good. It's our responsibility. And as as someone who, you know, wants to work with people, it's so important that we are like that, that we are, you know, taking that responsibility with care, yeah. you know, and with care. Really compassion. With compassion, caring about people. I love that. Um, mm-hmm. one of your other roles is um corporate training. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, corporations enhance their skills and their communication. Do you see that more corporations are, especially now through the pandemic, being more um, mindful of their employees and helping them, you know, grow individually and corporately? Like, do you see that growing now within corporations and, and how so? Yeah. So I think you said since the pandemic, there has been a insurgence or an awareness, a new awareness for companies 
corporate, I want to say just corporations, nonprofit organizations, small businesses, um, let's see, crews of all types, teams of all types to move into the mental wellness of their of their teams, of their employees, and of their partners. So before there has been a really big push, we know the importance of training, employee training, but now there has been a development, there has been a awareness that it's not just training that's needed, but there's development. Training and development is two separate things. So I, uh, I can teach you the basics of communication skills for workplace success. I can teach you the basics. I can give you a class on that. I can give you a class on confidence and selling. I can give you a class on stress management for the workplace. I can give you a class on that. I can show you the one, two, threes. However, as we all know, that it is not the release of information that brings about any type of change or transformation. It is the development of information. So no longer are wise companies simply offering training programs. There, there is also consultation and coaching that allows for individuals such as myself to come into companies and to create programs for the culture to make a shift. So what we have now is we're creating a, one of our programs is uh, creating a culture of recognition, appreciation, and gratitude. Understanding that the foundation within any industry, if you have people working with people, people work better when they're recognized, appreciated, and have the unique ability to show gratitude. So it's not just a company showing recognition and appreciation to their employees, but it is teaching the employee how important it is for them to show gratitude one to, to one another, to their managers, to their community. And I found that some of our most successful programs have been a, a combination of training and develop, development, a combination of wellness, um, which is a lot of companies are. So if you, there's anyone out there that teaches um, wellness in any capacity, that could be nutrition, that could be being fit, that could be mental wellness. There is a need for, for individuals to go out and to share their gift on a larger scale, which allows for my heart, but also what the industry is calling for a culture shifts. And culture shifts comes in awareness and awareness that the company itself is setting new policies that will affect the employees, the managers, and the C-level. Mm, that's so important. Because I think that one of, first of all, you spend the majority of your day in the workplace, you know, whether you're working from home or working. Yeah, from home. exactly. And exactly. it's so important for company. I know just from working for not so great companies in the past. <laughs> Uh, right. I've always, yes. you know, taking those tools and like yes. when I become an employer, this is what I'm not going to do. Yes. <laughs> right. Know? I and, think and, a lot of programs have been developed like that. I, yeah. This is what we're not going to do mm-hmm. with my company. Yeah. And that I want to create an environment for my employees where they want to come to work each day. You don't yes. want employees who dread waking up and coming to work each day, you know? And so if you can bring in someone like yourself who is going to just give them, you know, the the words, you know, the the tools, the tools development, yeah, um, yeah. to help them, you know, be the best on their jobs and, and help them see the potential within their jobs, help them see the opportunity right. to grow. Because yes. that's no one's there just to be there. You know, of course we're there to get a paycheck, but <laughs> want to know that there is potential for them to grow like people want to know that there right. is an opportunity for more and so I think that you know helping employers see that and then helping employees see that yeah. that potential is there is going to motivate them to do more we've been talking a lot about motivation who and or what motivates you Latanya? Woo, girl 
That's a good question. What motivates me? It is probably, okay, I'm going to be honest. It sounds very spiritual. And I was going to say it depends on any given day. Mm -hmm. But if I'm very honest, the, the answer is I, my heart, I just want to please God and make him happy. I really want to hear him say, Tanya, you did that when you were there on earth. Well done. You did what I asked you to do. That's what motivates me like beyond anything else. I could say, you know, there's so many different things that move us to action, but moving for me to move past circumstance and situations, emotions and feelings and, and, and body uh, physical with strength. I think the thing that really motivates me is loving God and just wanting to please him and make him happy. I know it sounds goofy and I know it sounds so spiritual, but it's like, that's it. It's real. And it should be a desire for all of us because, you know, I find for myself, the time where I'm not my happiest is when I'm not in purpose, you know? So when I can seek him and be like, okay, God, am I doing what you purpose for me to do on this day? Like you said, because every given Just day, today. Be something different, you know, yeah. purpose, mm-hmm. but you yesterday might not look like it does today. Um, so if you can be real and authentically ask him, God, am I in my purpose? What can I be doing? To please you on today. To please you right now today. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, we are not just here for ourselves. We're not here for the big house and the cars and the white picket fence. Like, we are here with a purpose. And the worst thing you can do is to get to the end of your life and realize you wasted it. You know, they realize that you did not do what he created you to do. Like you said, we should actually desire to hear him say job well done. So no, that's that's not corny at all. That's necessary, and that's how we all should be. <laughs> that's what we should yeah. all be. Um, what what do you do to strengthen your craft when it comes to speaking? When it comes to coaching and all the things that you do, what do you do to strengthen those skills? I am a uh, just an avid, ravenous reader. Mm. I love books. Mm. I love books. I love, I love learning. I'm just that little weirdo that I will take a class on anything all the time. I am always in some sort of class or some sort of development. So I think for any person that is looking to develop their class, having a desire to master or, or be really good some don't have the desire to be great. Mm-hmm. And I would encourage you um, with the word of God. When he said to Abraham, when he pulled him out, he says, I will bless you. And I will make your name great, famous, and distinguished. I will bless you. And I will cause you to be a blessing. Yeah. I believe that greatness is a call from God on all of our lives, no matter what it is that we're called to do. If it's being a mom, if it's being a tutor, if it's being a babysitter, if it's being a plumber, if it's being a teacher, no matter what you're called to do, an actor, an actress, a director, having the desire of God to be great in your craft is a part of what we as believers have been commissioned to do. And that's going to look different for everybody, but not being passive about um, maintaining and developing your skills, not being passive about um, your capacity to not just do more, learn more, but to be more I think that there's a lot of talk now on hustle, hustle, make money. We got to do this. Let's grind, rise and grind, pray and grind. Um, But I find that I personally find that sleep is not for suckers. Sleep is a requirement in order to function, (laughs) in order to function properly, in order to do what you've been called to do. 
rest and rejuvenation is really important. Mm -hmm. And the greatness comes in when you take the totality of the person that God has called you to be, and you begin to work on each and every area. You begin to work on your emotions. You can be an excellent at your craft, but an emotional wreck. No one wants to work with you. You can be the most kind, the kindest person that there is, and everyone loves you and likes you, but you're not great at your craft. You don't have a, a good attention span. There's no self-discipline in your work. There, are, You could have great, be wonderful at your job. And your relationships are just lacking because you've not developed the skills to understand how to relate to people, how to communicate with people, and more importantly, how to love yourself enough so that you don't need people to feed you what you should have for yourself. So I digress. I don't even know what the question was, but <laughs> don't I just said something. If you ain't bless nobody else, you just spoke <laughs> a word to me. And that was the reason why we had to have this conversation on today. Because okay. <laughs> thank God. Honestly, I, I, I was just saying or why. Yeah, I'm gonna be very honest and transparent. Today I was having one of them days where I just was like, could not get up the <sighs> I, I hate saying motivation, but it's yeah, lack of better words, motivation to, you know, keep pursuing this thing. You know, I have yes. two podcasts and I have things that I'm working towards. And sometimes you don't see the fruit in it, you know, mm -hmm. and it really just put me in a place where I just was like, you know, you get to that point sometimes where you're just like, uh -huh. I just want to sleep it off, you know, like I don't even want to <laughs> think yes. about it. And, you know, and it's so important not to lose sight of, you know, the gifts God has put in you and the things that he's put on your heart. They're there for a reason. And it's so easy to sit on those gifts and to let them go to waste. But when God has given you a desire and he's given you something that he's put on your heart to do, you have to pursue it with passion and expect him to do the rest, you know? And you have to take care of yourself. Like you brought up that wellness earlier. And that's so important. And I love that people are being more um, outspoken about self-care and, you know, doing things for you. Um, but in addition to that, like that wellness piece, that sleep and getting rest and 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 even like spiritual wellness, like like you said, yes. like that spiritual hygiene, taking the time. Yes. Like every day I'm spending this time in devotion. I'm spending this time in prayer. I'm spending this time in worship. I'm, I'm taking care of myself. I'm being mindful of what I eat and I'm getting my, you know, required amount of sleep each, each night so that I can have the motivation and the energy to go full force that, to or whatever it is that he's called me to do. So I needed this today. I needed that motivation on today because I think it happens to everyone. Um, but especially when you're in the building stages, yes. you know, when you're like in those stages where you don't see the phone's not ringing off the hook or, you know, the contacts yeah. aren't coming in or you're trying to pursue, you know, self-employment or whatever it may yes. be, but you're just not seeing the fruit of it. Even if you're on a nine to five and you're like, I've worked right. for years, yes. I'm not getting promoted or I'm not, there's always going to be a need to push yourself out of that rut or out of that comfort zone or into the next level. And that can only happen by being very intentional about what you're feeding yourself. Can I make a recommendation? Yeah. I want to, so I say this as being the queen of it, not have been the, the inventor or the master. I am the, the, the queen of really needing um, consistent motivation, reaching for goals that are so much bigger than myself, mm -hmm. reaching for goals that I, I cannot do mm -hmm. and believing that, that God has placed these things in me. And it's, and just as yourself, there are days when you do not, well, I'll speak for myself. I do not want to get out of my bed. There are days when I don't believe that I can do the things that God have called me to do. There are days that I don't want to do it. It hurts too mm -hmm. much to try again. It hurts too much. The disappointment sits in a space inside of us that has a, that has a consistent voice that will pull us back, 
that will keep us in this limited thinking because of past experience. And one of the things that I found being very familiar with that place Mm -hmm. is that the push, push, grind, grind mentality, one is not from God. God has never told us. The Bible tells us that the blessing of the Lord makes us rich and it adds no sorrow to it. One of the virgins says, there's no painful toil. The Bible also says that Jesus is coming to me, all of you that are labor, meaning that you're working too hard and are heavy laden and I will give you what? I will give you rest. So there is a biblical um, example and mandate for us to, to call upon God in order to, progressively move towards the things that he's called us to do Mm. when those days come when those moments of of hopelessness those moments of disappointment just continue to shoot up i believe one of the things that we can do is to create an automatic language within ourselves because again if we understand that words were not just used to communicate, but they were used to create. So what I can do, I can work in creating my future, creating my my ideal um, contract job. I can work on that simply by sitting here and thanking God right now. Father, I thank you. I don't have the strength to get up. I cannot make another call. I do. they're, They're not, they don't like (laughs) <laughs> Listen to me. They don't like my social media post, God. So, mm-hmm. you know, look, I'm going to give that to you. But in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Father, that you're bringing clients to me. Mm-hmm. I thank you, Father, that you are releasing a supernatural favor into me and to my business. I thank you for the wisdom, oh God, to be able to see hidden opportunities that I have not seen before. I call forth millions of dollars. I call them from the north, south, east, and west, and using our words. Yeah. to create because that's what he did he yeah. did he called those things that be not as though they were and we are so conditioned myself included I, I I'm saying this because this is what God this is where he's working me through to the things that he's calling me to that looks so much bigger than me where I just want to put my head under the covers I don't want to make another phone call I it, this is hard God it hurts the disappointment, the rejection that comes in business and building something that only you can see, it hurts. Yes. But we have an invisible team, an invisible force. We have angelic forces, the Holy Spirit, and most importantly, Jesus Christ, who is on the right hand of God making intercession for us even right now that we can call on. And I believe that those moments of um, lack of motivation shouldn't become moments of guilt and shame where you feel like, you know, I'm lazy, I'm never gonna, whatever it is, those moments of lack of motivation and the shame that comes with it can be transformed into empowering moments where we are intentionally calling those things that be not as though they were, where we are intentionally using the tool of our imagination to allow ourselves to see beyond our limitations, see beyond our boundaries, to allow the spirit of God to speak to us, to refuel us and to revive us. I do not believe that hustle, hustle, grind, grind, push, push is the way that God has called us to manifest his glory in the earth. Because if we do it with our natural man-made strength, he gets no glory. But when he's called you to do something supernatural, you've got to use the supernatural tools that will allow him to manifest his glory in our situation. What are those tools? Those tools are the words that we speak, being very, very, um, wise about the language that we're using about our business, about ourselves, about our future, being very wise about the language that we are speaking, what we're calling forth, what are we repelling? And that's not just in that time of of prayer. That's not just doing that spiritual warfare prayer. This is what you have to do every day, all day. And when you find yourself in that place where you don't want to get up, it's okay. Lay there, 
talk in the spirit, talk to God about it, write out in your journal. This is, I, I'm not feeling it. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe my husband and I are going to travel the world and we're going to do this, 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 and this. I can see us in Dubai walking in the sand. I see myself riding this camel and my husband pitch lifting me up. I mean, those are things that we can do. It's not making another phone call. It's not getting up and making another social media, media post, but it is preparing the atmosphere, the angelic forces, our heart and the power of God for him to move supernaturally in our business, in our lives so that he can get glory in the things that he's spoken to us. Mike, drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike. Yeah. Drop, man, this, this conversation is so important because I think we hear a lot of conversation about, you know, career, about money, mm -hmm. how to, uh, you know, how to acquire things, yeah. um, but generational so, wealth and all, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's so important. You cannot have that conversation. You cannot have the conversation of success without having the conversation about your spiritual walk, about your relationship with God, because that is a key component of success, <laughs> like to real success. It is. So you can acquire the money, you can acquire the things, but to acquire real success, and to me, success looks like, okay, I have everything that I need, right. and I have the freedom to go to Dubai with my husband. I'm not like, oh, I'm on call. I got to get right. like the freedom along with the things and the, yes. the peace, like all of those are, are factors peace. of success. Joy. Joy. Laughter. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. For real. The possessions and the things. And the only way to accomplish that is to be in the will of God. The only way to actually see that come to fruition is right. to have the the work ethic attached with discernment so that when yes. God says sit still you're not oh no I gotta hustle God says sit still sit still because there's a reason why that that component to your success might be two days away but if you're not right. rested you know you might not pick up the phone or you might you know so I think it's so important that we never forget that, you know, because I, I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it again. Like there's a reason why we are in the two years now of, of having to sit still, you know, oh, of God, yeah. like forcing us to sit down. <laughs> I feel like there's a reason, God, like, you know, y'all are so busy. Y'all are so busy. And for what, what are you doing? You're not listening. What are you doing? You know, you're not doing what I told you to do because you're yeah. so busy. And so like that time with God shouldn't be something that we have to pencil in. Like it should be something that we, yes. we are just like, it's just natural. You know, it's something that we innately do because it's so, so big. And it's such a big component of our success. So big yeah, I love this conversation. It's so necessary. Um, man, this is so good. You've written a series of books, you have journals, and right now you're offering um, the offer checklist, which is guiding mm -hmm. aspiring authors on mm -hmm. book the book writing process. Tell us about those endeavors. What led you to creating these tools or these resources and where can people find them? All that good stuff. So the author um, checklist was simply made because once we did our books, there were a number of individuals that wanted to do the same. And I just got, you know, a little tired of people saying, can I pick your brain? What do I do? Mm -hmm. So I have this um, checklist. And the great thing about it is that it allows any person with any message to outline it. This is for a book, but it can be done for a speech. It can be done for a program. And it just gives you the basis on how to format and outline the, the information that you want to present in a way that is fun and easy and not overwhelming. Uh, the, the books I'm passionate about 
prayer and prayer journal. So we do have those um, available. We have a new great self-care ebook that just talks about how you can um, identify the various areas of your life and just take small steps, small Mm -hmm. steps, commit to small steps at a time to care for yourself. Now there's a, one of the things that I believe is that there's a big difference between self-love and self-care. And I think that it has been intertwined to minimize the importance of self-love. Self-love is not a day at the spa. That's self-care. Self-love is taking the time to forgive yourself for those mistakes, taking the time to acknowledge who you are, why you're here, going through self-discovery, eliminating the things that devalue yourself Mm -hmm. and increasing the things that allow you to appreciate who you are and what God has created you to be. Self-love is acceptance of every wrinkle and every bump and every bulge or every skinny, you know, leg, appreciating it with the heart of God that tells you, girl, I made you and I love you just like you are. Mm. Self-love is not new shoes. Mm. Self-love is, is not taking yourself out to dinner because you can go on a date by yourself. Those things may be a result of self-love and they may be a part of your self-care routine, but understanding your love, appreciation, forgiveness, and acknowledgement of yourself comes before you can even begin to care for yourself in a way that allows you to be the perfect version of God's love projected in the earth. So I say this because the, one of our upcoming series is, is self-discovery um, and we're moving, we're creating also our corporate uh, wellness, stress wellness, which includes the self-discovery and self-love. And I want to be able to provide um, a safe place for individuals to go through a journey of self-discovery, mm. but also begin to move into true, authentic self-love that allows you to then care for yourself, love and care for others, and be the person that God has called you to be in the earth manifest, you know, is my thing, manifesting miracle signs and wonders in our lives. Mm, mm, I love that. I love that definition of self-love. I'm just thinking we've been talking a lot about success, and I think about a lot of people that we see as successful Mm -hmm. and they speak well of themselves, you know, whether or not they believe it. It's so important to affirm yourself in that way and speaking well of yourselves and seeing yourself through God's eyes. And, and, you know, like that takes work, that self knowing yourself enough to speak well of yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Because knowing yourself means that you can identify your skills and you can identify right. strong. that's the thing this is and you know what makes you the bomb exactly yes yes yeah. know what makes you the bomb and and yeah. highlight that and walk in that with confidence right yes. um yeah that's how you can get to that best self that you're desiring man Latanya, this has been good i know it would be it always yeah. is girl so necessary Getting here yes such a good conversation. Let the people know where they can find you, how they can get your books and so on. So my books are on Amazon and um, you can always pick them up at my link in the bio for Latanya at Latanya Michelle, L-A-T-A-N-I-A-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E. So we're on Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok. Um, Check us out. Check us out. Check us out. I'm looking forward to this new season, Mm -hmm. the new things that God has um, given and we're going to be sharing. 
but also I, I really want to be um, a support because I, I know how it feels to be moving towards something that's bigger than yourself. And I think it's really important to create a community of like-minded individuals that can encourage you into your greatness and allow you to make mistakes, not be so perfect, but know that you are going to be all that God has called you to be. And that comes from a community as well. Yeah, I love that. And I know that when you say that, you mean it because I've witnessed your heart and I know that you really say what you mean, you know, and that really <laughs> want to me. people, you really want to see people get to that place of self love. Yeah. And I've seen you help people get there. And so I just encourage everyone to support everything that Latanya Michelle is doing because it's really, it's such a gift and it's such a, um, man, it, she's really doing the work that she's talking about. So support what she's doing and get those books on Amazon, visit her website, go to all the social medias, Latanya Michelle, you'll see that here in the caption. Um, but thank you so much for blessing us and gracing us with your mm -hmm. presence. You blessed me tremendously and I know mm -hmm. everyone that's watching or listening has been blessed as well thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here thank you for the invitation it's always a joy you know I love you very much and I'm anything you ever need I appreciate that same to you love you so much and thank you everyone for watching and listening to name a better duo podcast until next week I'm Renee Nicole love you guys have an amazing rest of your week